This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this chapter, we're going to talk about pads. If you're talking about pads, vector shapes, you need to have access to the pads panel. I am in the Essentials workspace. If you are, it'll be right down here. Let's go ahead, actually, and move that over here so we can see it. And I'll make that just a little bit longer like that. I've divided this exercise file into four areas, and it is in your exercise files. It's called Pads 101. If you want to open this one, you can, but it's not really necessary. You could just open up a blank document. But I've got triangle, rectangle, circle, and whatever in those four areas. Here is the Pads panel. Pads are vector information. Without the Pads panel, you wouldn't be able to use a pen tool in Adobe Illustrator, but to me that's not the question. The question is why are we designing vector in a raster program? And we will talk about that. This first lesson is just kind of a introduction, how'd you do, to the pen tool and the pads panel. Now when we go into pads, if you've not done anything yet to the document vector-wise, it'll be empty. It's not like layers where you have layers. And it's not like channels where you have color information channels. Basically, it's waiting for us to do something. Now, in order for us to do something, we need a tool. And the tool is right over here. It is the pen tool. If you select it, you get a pen tool, a freeform pen tool, and a bunch of other tools we'll talk about. Once you have the tool selected, you can move into the document. Now, the document itself is blank. Like I said, there's nothing in it. All I can see right now is the pen tool, but notice there's like an asterisk next to the pen tool. The pen tool is talking to you. It's saying, hey, if you start something now, it'll be brand new. I'm not connecting to anything. It has nothing to do with any other vector path. This is brand new. I want you to watch over here when I click over here. I create what is called a work path. The paths panel. Its purpose in life is to hold vector information. If I move down here, say to about here, and notice that the asterisk went away. Why? Because I have a pen point on the screen. The pen tool knows that. And it's telling me, hey, if you click now, I will connect whether you see that point or not to that point that's up there. And so I get to say about here and click again. Now, since I didn't move the cursor, drag it. It's going to create a straight line between the two points. Shortest distance between two points is a straight line. If I move over here, we're doing a triangle. And click again. And then one more time up here, but you'll notice something changes. There is a small circle next to the pen tool, meaning close the shape. If I click now, the shape closes off and the cursor goes back to a triangle because it's done creating that shape. So you watch what's going on with that pen tool. If you want to do a rectangle, try this. Come over to about here again and click. I'm going to get right about here because I don't want to get in the path of the paths panel. And I'll get right about there. Now, how do you know really that you're right where you're supposed to be? Hold the shift key down if you want to draw straight. And it'll do a perfect line between the two. Come down to here if it's a rectangle. Hold the shift key again. This will be the hardest one because if I hold the shift key down, I'm guaranteed this will be a straight line, but I'm going to have to eyeball this. And I'll show you what happens if we don't get that right. And I'll get right about here, hold the shift key, and then I come back up to here. Okay, that's one in a million. Okay, I actually did it, but I'm going to show you what happens if you get it wrong, how you fix it. Again, now we have a rectangle. If we made a mistake, if we want to modify the shape now that it's made, we can go to this tool right down here which is a selection tool, but you have two of them. You have a path selection, which means it will select the entire object, the triangle or the rectangle, allow you to move it but not change it, or the direct selection tool. The direct selection tool allows me to modify the shape. So if I come back up to my rectangle and I click on the corner anchor point like this, it comes all up. If I click it again, this one will go dark. And you can see it is dark. Now you can move it by dragging it, but if you use your arrow keys, 
you can gently nudge it any way that you want. Or like I said, you could pick it up and drag it. So if you didn't get that one exactly right, and I'm kind of proud of myself that I did that, you can use the arrow keys with the direct selection tool. The same thing up here. The pyramid top is not really in the center. So I could come up to this one right here and again click on it until that one goes dark. And then I'd say use your arrow keys. It would be safer. But you are doing it with your eyes right now. You're deciding where things should be. All we've done so far is make straight lines, which is fine, I guess. But you can make any kind of line you want to, including curve lines. If you use Adobe Illustrator, you already know this. I started using Adobe Illustrator in 1987. I'm pretty good with the pen tool. There's no difference, really, in this pen tool and the one you find in Illustrator. So if you're good drawing illustrations in Illustrator with a pen tool, this is not really going to be a problem. It's just how we use it and where the stuff goes, which is over here. But you know what? I've got two objects inside of that one work path. And I don't want all my objects in one work path. I want them separate. So before I start making a circle down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the new button for a new path. Now we can name these things if you want to. The default is path one, two, three, four. The first one you make is called work path. Let's call this one circle. Circle sounds like a good name. Let's go ahead and come pick up our pen tool again. And this time I'm going to click right about here and I'm going to drag straight down. Now what's happening is it's going to cause the line to bend based on the amount I drag from the anchor point. If I come over to about here and do that again, and I'm going to try to get those two circles at the bottom about lined up. So I got kind of a semicircle going here right now. If I come back to the original, I'll see a circle. I'll click and I'll hold and I'll drag down like this, and I've got, well, actually more of an oval. Let's come over here and pick up our direct selection tool and get right here. And we'll go ahead and make sure that when you click it, you see both of the direction lines coming off of it. Now you got it selected. We can move it out. And we are doing this by our eyes, but we created a circle with two anchor points. Straight lines or curved lines can be achieved very easily with a pen tool. But like anything else, it takes a little bit of practice. Now in the whatever place over here, let's go back into the pen tool and click and hold. And you'll see one called the freeform. Now that's my whatever. What it does is it allows me to create any shape by dragging. I'm not recommending you do this, but if we go back into the direct selection tool and click on that line, you can see there are quite a few anchor points on that piece. So basic drawing techniques with a tool. But what we have to answer here is why are we doing this in a raster-based program? And we're going to find that out in the upcoming lessons. On to the next.